homework time. Yes. Happy, happy, happy. Homework time is here yet again. Let's start in the best way. Let's jot our name down at top of the paper. I'll put my name. You put yours. Don't want to forget this step, you know. Get credit for your work and all that. Let's also write down today's date while we're at it. I'll write today. You write the actual date where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. And let's look at our instructions. Show one way, just one, to solve each problem. We'll express sums and differences. So we're doing addition and subtraction here as a mixed number when possible. So a mixed number, remember, is a whole number with a fraction. In some cases, it might not be possible because it'll just be a fraction. It'll be a value less than one, or perhaps it'll be a value equal to a whole number, like one, two, or three, and that would not be a mixed number. We'll use number bonds when it helps us, um, which actually I kind of like doing. I like number bonds, hey. So part A is partially completed. So here you see we're adding one-third, two-third, and one-third. You add those up. An intermediate step here would be to add one, two, and one and say, oh, this is four-thirds, right? Or what they did is they put together basically the one-third and two-thirds and said that's three-thirds plus one-third. Well, the three-thirds is equal to one whole, and then we still have this one-third. We can't just abandon there. And you don't have to write the stuff I'm writing here. I'm just doing illustration. Um, so our final answer is not one plus one third, but simply one and one third. All right, let's do one on our own here. Now, look, we can, we can do this one similar to the last one because when you look at this, five eighths and five eighths and three eighths, do you notice anything? Five, five, and three we're adding, we're talking about eighths. Uh, I notice that, hey, I can add these first, okay? Five eighths and three eighths, what does that give me? Yes, eight eighths, so you see I can, find a one hole there quite easily. And then, of course, I still have this 5 eighths. Well, the 8 eighths is equal to one hole, right? And notice I'm writing that as large as the fractions. And then, of course, I cannot forget about my homely, lonely little 5 eighths. So a final answer here would be 1 and 5 eighths. Lovely. Um, when we look at the next one, however, though, we don't have that convenience of uh, a quick... Uh, whole number. So we have 4, 6, 6, 6, and 1, 6. We see we can't add anything there and get 6, 6, but we're given 6, 6, so that's just as good. So we could say, hey, this is equal to 6, 6. Well, what's the 4, 6, and 1, 6 together? Right, 5, 6. And see, so this one ends up working just like the other two in the end. So the 6, 6 is equal to 1 whole, and then we still have cannot forsake our five six and you see that's going to very quickly become a step we'll skip right because we'll I shouldn't say skip we'll do in our heads because it's pretty straightforward so our final answer there of course is one and five six that's it yo let's do some more all right and in this uh, little set here we need to be on the lookout for where we have to add or subtract um, but taking a quick glance at all of them which I like to do to get the big picture we see in some of these we start with the mixed number, yes, um, and then in some others, what do we have? Oh, these are definitely going to add up to be more than 15 for sure. We'll see. That one will be interesting. And here we're dealing with just a whole number, another mixed number here. All right, so we have a sense of what's going on. All right, so now... Uh, this one we can do in stages because look at this, 1 and 2 twelfths minus 2 twelfths. Well, it's just going to be 1 now, isn't it? And then we're going to subtract 1 twelfth from that. Now, the easiest way to do this, uh, there's two ways you could do it. I'll, I'll show you kind of the take an extra step way, is, which is 1 whole is equal to how many twelfths? Well, it's 12 twelfths, right? And so you can subtract 1 twelfth from that, and what do you get, friends? 11 twelfths, okay? So this one we can't express as a mixed number as we talked about in the instructions there. The, the other way of doing this is basically to do this little step here in your head and say, oh, okay, what's a twelfth less than twelve twelfths? Yeah. So you can do that. All right, so now here we look. Uh, we have five-sevenths and one-seventh and four-seventh. Okay, so let's do this one a little bit differently. Let's just add those bad boys up. Five and one and four. Well, five and one are six. Four make ten. And what are we talking about here? 
we're talking about sevenths. And this is where our handy little number bond comes in place. I'm talking about sevenths. So how many sevenths make a whole? Well, it's, yes, seven sevenths. And how many does that leave? It leaves three sevenths. So what I just did, just to be clear, the 10 is now seven and three. Why? Because seven sevenths gives me that nice, convenient one whole. In fact, I can just simply rewrite this. Seven sevenths is one whole. And can't forget my little three sevenths here. There we go. Boom, done. All right, now let's look at this next one. Let's do the same approach here. Four and seven make 11, good. And nine more, 11 and nine. Yeah, if you're used to playing blackjack, right, that's 20. And we're talking about tenths here. Now this one's interesting, because let's split off the one whole. It's 10 tenths, right? And how many does that leave? Ah, another 10 tenths, doesn't it? Okay, so what's the value of this 10 tenths? Well, it's one whole. And what's the value of this 10 tenths? It's also one whole. And now here we go. Trickiest question I've ever asked you. What is one plus one? Oh my goodness, you got it right, too. You schmokin. All right, now here with this one, uh, this is the same way we were doing up here on 12. So we're saying one whole minus three tenths. Okay, so let's say one whole. How many tenths is that? Ten tenths. And then we're going to subtract. And I'm just going to rewrite the whole thing here. I just wanted to rewrite the one whole as ten tenths so you could see what's going on there. So ten tenths minus three tenths. Right? Seven tenths. And then I'm going to subtract one tenth from that. And what is left? Very good, six tenths. All right, now we could simplify that. You probably noticed right off that they have two as their uh, greatest common factor, um, but we're not going to. So now in this one, this is a little tricky because you notice right off, ooh, one and three fifths. Boy, can I take four fifths from that? No, I can't take four away from three. Yeah, so, so here we go. The one whole we know is how many fifths? Yes, it's five fifths. And we can't forget the three fifths we have there already, right? So how many fifths is this all together? I'm going to kind of recompose them here. That's eight fifths. Ah, now I can subtract, and I'm having to write smaller here to fit all this in, four fifths and one fifth from that. All right, eight fifths minus four fifths leaves Four fifths, very good. And then we just have to subtract one more fifth from that. And what does that leave us with? Three fifths. You got it. See how this works? Cruising here. All right, so these are all fifteenths. And we're adding. So it's pretty straightforward. Ten and seven make? Seventeen. Twelve more. Well, you can actually break that down in your head into two parts if it helps. Seventeen plus ten? Twenty-seven. Two more, 28, 29. Okay, we're up to 29. Ooh, and one more makes 30. This is similar to the one up above. So we have 30 fifteenths. And you probably noticed, make that look like a zero, not a six. You probably noticed right off that, ah, 15 is half of 30. So, but we'll do the number bond so you can really see if we uh, decompose, bust out, as I like to say, that one whole of 15 fifteenths. How many fifteenths does that leave? Yes, another 15 fifteenths. And so we are doing just exactly what we did up in F. That is one hole, and that is one hole. And you got it right last time, so I know you know this. No, that's... Oh, yeah, 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 two. Okay, good. One plus one is two. Good. Let's go on. Well, if your Bonnie lies over the ocean, then this is the question for you. Bonnie, whoever she is, used two different strategies to solve five tenths plus four tenths plus three tenths. So here's her first strategy. Whoa, that's a lot of numbers, Bonnie. All right, well, here's, she just rewrote it there. Equals what? Well, it looks like she added first the five and the four to get nine tenths, right? So I could even just put parentheses around it because that's essentially what she did. And then she added the three tenths. But here's what she did. She said, well, I can decompose because I see I need one more tenth here to make one whole. So the 9 tenths and the 1 tenths is where she gets this 10 tenths from. Do you see that? 
And, and to be honest with you, this looks a little clunky written out, but this is kind of how my head does math when I'm doing things like this. So I understand you completely, Bonnie. I'm with you. Um, and so the 10 tenths is easy. Now I have my nice, easy one whole and then two tenths more. Okay. So now in this one, she just added up 5 plus 4 plus 3, right? And got 12. Decompose that as 10 tenths and 2 tenths. The 10 tenths is one whole. We have the 2 tenths, 1 and 2 tenths. What strategy do you like best and why? Um, well, let's... We'll hazard an answer at this, but you should really write your own. I'm just going to give you an example of what a good answer might look like, which is to say, uh, let's go with the second one. Personally, I do uh, empathize best with the first one, but I, I think most of you are going to like the second one because it's shorter. I like her second strategy best because, now this is of course is the key word here, you can't just like write, I like your second strategy best. Why? And it has to be an actual explanation. Um, and what makes the second strategy a little bit easier from one vantage point? Well, to me, I look at 5 plus 4 plus 3 and you just add them up and, and there's no decomposing in the middle of adding or I'm going to associate these two together. You just add everything up. Um, because, and that's exactly what I'm going to say, <laughs> she just adds everything up, and then decomposes to create a mixed number. And I'm actually going to go a little step, step forward here because why really is this a good idea? Okay, I, I think I'd be less likely to make... Oh, I'm going to squeeze in down here at the bottom a mistake this way. See, so that's actually kind of expanding on the answer a little bit and saying, well, I, I think it's less error prone, uh, which I have to admit it is, because here, if you don't do all that little in-between stuff quite right, um, you're liable to make an error. So, great, that's number two. Let's go see what we have in store for number three. And number three, which is the last example, by the way, our instructions are, you gave, yeah, we did that, one solution for each part of problem one. Now for each problem indicated below, give a different solution method. And you see I've kind of copied and pasted in here um, my examples from earlier so you can see them. Look, so here's, you know, 1B, this is how we did it. And this is how we did 1E, and this is how we did 1H. So you could see what they looked like and we could do it differently. So what we did before in 1B was we grouped together and made uh, the one whole, the 8 eighths. So obviously another solution here would just be to add straight across. 5 and 5 and 3 make, well 5 and 5 are 10, 3 more make, there you go, 13. So here's another way of doing this. We could say 13 eighths and then decompose that. We'll pull out the one whole as 8 eighths. And that leaves, ooh, that's a fact family to know. 8, 13, who's missing? 5, yes, at least 5. Eighths, and so we know that this is, you know, even put a little plus sign here, this is 1 whole, and that's 5 eighths, so together they equal 1 and 5 eighths. Splendid, yes? Okay, now, on this one, what we did was that strategy, we just added straight across I don't know. What, what could be another strategy? Huh, another solution method. I don't know. There really isn't a good one. This is really the best solution method. Uh, 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 so we have to come up with a worse one. Um, <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, kids. I don't know. What are we supposed to do? Make it harder? Like, that's the most straightforward one. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I quit. No, I don't. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Let's just, let's take it in steps. I don't know what to tell you. I guess we can make it harder if we just add the five and the four first. <laughs> I don't know. Gosh, what do you want from me, Eureka? Blood? All right, so it's nine-sevenths and one-seventh. And then decompose this as seven-sevenths and two-sevenths plus one-seventh, which equals one whole, and three-sevenths, which is one and three-sevenths. It's almost the same thing. All I do is change the order of operate. I don't know. Bah. Okay, this one, though, we can actually do differently. One thing I considered when looking at this is to start with the one and three-fifths and just subtract the one-fifth out first. Okay, and so that would leave us one and two-fifths, and then we can subtract the four-fifths from there. It's not very different. Again, you're just kind of changing the order of things. Um, and so this is, the one whole is, we know, five-fifths with the two-fifths, so that's seven-fifths minus four-fifths equals three-fifths. Okay, there we did it different ways. Ha, huh, people! All right, there we go. Well, you did it, and I did it. Tea time. Complete another homework time, and I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time.